Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, today we're gonna to do another episode of Bites and Nibbles with Breck. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare chicken enchiladas. Now, you may recall that last Christmas my mom got me a set of cast iron cookware and that included a Dutch oven. You may also recall that a couple weeks ago I went to Spice Village in Waco and got a couple of cookbooks that will teach me how to cook things using my cast iron cookware. And we're gonna try one of those recipes today. And so I'm really looking forward to trying this. Now, we're gonna kind of be making this up as we go along because the recipe book that I have that's specifically designed for the Dutch oven is actually designed for you to use when you're camping. So it's supposed to be cooked on an open flame, uh, like on a campfire or on coals or something like that. And we're gonna try and modify the recipe so that I can do it in the oven. But I'm looking forward to this. The ingredients look really good and this should be a treat. Let's go. So these are the ingredients for our chicken enchilada. And basically what it's gonna be is of course chicken, some enchilada sauce, green chili enchilada sauce, a can of diced green chilies, a little olive oil, and that's gonna be for uh, making the chicken, some chicken broth, which is also gonna be for making the chicken. We'll discuss that a little bit separately. Uh, some Mexican blend shredded cheese, some corn tortillas, a little cream cheese, and some uh, spinach. Now the recipe I have actually calls for frozen spinach, but I've elected to go with fresh spinach because fresh is always better, right? So let's take a look at this. So the first thing I need to do is shred three chicken breasts. Now the recipe book I have doesn't specifically tell you how to do this, but if you remember way back in episode 191, I created a cheese and chicken dip recipe called Buffalo Chicken Dip that uh, describe the process on how to shred chicken. So I'm gonna do that again. Basically, we're gonna take a little olive oil and a fry pan. We're gonna cook the, uh, the chicken for a few minutes on one side. Then we're gonna add some chicken broth and we're gonna basically cover the fry pan, flip the chicken, and let it cook for another few minutes. So let's start with that. So I've put a little bit of olive oil into my fry pan. I'm gonna turn on the stove to kind of a medium heat and we are going to put our chicken breasts in here and we're gonna brown them a little bit uh, for about five minutes on one side and then uh, we'll move on from there. And I'm gonna coat them with a little bit of salt and pepper. For flavor, you can do this to, to your own tastes. This will kind of help add to the flavor a little bit. So we're gonna let that cook for a little bit for about five minutes until it browns on one side and then we'll move on from there. All right, about five minutes have passed now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the chicken over, cook it on the other side. Yeah, that's nice and brown, hasn't it? And we are gonna add about three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. And this is just gonna kinda help everything cook a little faster. And we're gonna cover it up and we're gonna let it go for another about 10 minutes. So I'll catch up with you in 10 minutes. All right, 10 minutes has gone by and my chicken is about ready. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. So we'll get that off of there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chop it up into little shredded pieces here. And I'll show you how we do that. Now according to the recipe, there's two ways we can do this. You can either shred it up with a fork, which sounds really, complicated and time consuming, or you can use some technology. And I'm gonna use the technology because I got the technology. Basically, I'm just gonna put the chicken breasts into my mixer, and we're gonna use that to shred everything up. And that I've done that before, and that works pretty well. So we'll come back and uh, look at that in a minute, and we'll see what shredded chicken looks like. Yeah, that's way easier than using a fork. Uh, use a fork if you feel like it, but if you got a blender, that makes it much easier. Now, I was preparing this once at my mom's house. My mom didn't have a mixer. She actually put it in a food processor with a, with a chopping blade, and that did an equally good job. So that's an option too. Also, while I was at it, I ground up the spinach using the food processor. So that's ready too. You kind of know how that works. Just put it in the food processor, 
I used a little slicer tool and it just kind of chopped it up into little uh, thin slices and that's about ready for that. Now we're going to assemble this whole mixture and like I said this is all just kind of put together in layers and those layers look pretty good so let's get going. Now this is a lot like my mom's lasagna where everything's just kind of made in layers so you kind of want to get all the ingredients ready to go ahead of time. So I have all the enchilada sauce, the green chilies, the spinach, the chicken, the tortillas, and the cream cheese all kind of put aside all ready to go because it's all just going to be layered upon layer upon layer uh, to get this all done. So we're going to start by putting about a third of the enchilada sauce. So uh, it's going to be about two thirds of this can. And I was going to kind of eyeball that. So that's probably about right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take five of the corn tortillas and just kind of layer them over the top of this mixture. And we're going to tear them into little pieces so that they all kind of fit and overlap a little bit. And I'll show you what that looks like in one second. And that kind of looks like that. All right, so for the next layer, I'm going to include about half of my chicken and we're just going to kind of spread that around evenly over the tortillas. And that kind of looks like that. And the recipe actually says next to include a little salt and pepper for flavor. I actually put salt and pepper on it when I was preparing the chicken. I also threw in a little bit more when I was uh, shredding the chicken. So I'm not going to do that step now, but if you didn't add salt and pepper when you were shredding the chicken, you can do that now if you're interested. Okay, and next we're going to top with about half of our spinach. Since I can do that with one hand here, I am going to do that and let you see the process. Way to be part of the action, right? Oh yeah, looks good. All right. And after that, I'm going to use about half of the cream cheese and I'm just going to scoop a little chunks of it in on top of this and uh, kind of spread it around nice and evenly and I'll show you what that looks like. And that's what that looks like. Now we're going to top off with some of our diced jalapenos and I'm just going to kind of spread those all over. We're going to do about half of the can. And that's going to add the real flavor, ain't it? Oh yeah, I can smell that already. Smells delish. You know how much I love jalapenos. All right, now we're just going to repeat the whole process again. Another half of, or another third of the uh, enchilada sauce, then the tortillas, then more chicken, then more spinach, then more uh, cream cheese, more jalapenos, and then another layer of tortillas. All right, so there's the second third of the enchilada sauce. Next, we're going to put five more corn tortillas, kind of cut in half or torn in half and layered over the whole thing and then we'll go on from there. So there we have the second layer of tortillas and we're going to use the rest of the chicken now to coat that. Next we're going to coat with the rest of the uh, spinach and like I said before I can do that with one hand so you can watch for those of you who like to watch. And we'll just kind of pour the rest of that in there. Spread it around real nice. It's starting to look good. Next we're going to put uh, the rest of the sour cream on there. And then some more of the sliced jalapenos and we'll move on from there. And finally we're going to put the rest of the jalapenos on this layer. I almost halfway debated doing two cans of jalapenos just because, well, you know. But we'll stick with the original recipe this time and uh, mess with it next time. Now they have different uh, styles of the enchilada sauce from medium to, you know, mild or whatever you're into. I went with the hottest one I could find, of course. So that's up to you how you want to do that. And we're just going to pour the rest of this in here, kind of get a nice even coating all over the place. 
like I said, it's the jalapenos that give you your, your real fire. Next, we're going to coat that with five more tortilla shells, and then we're going to use the rest of the uh, enchilada sauce, and we're going to top the whole mixture with the Mexican cheese. And that's the third and final layer of the tortillas, and we're just going to top the whole thing with the rest of the uh, enchilada sauce. I'm going to try and get just a nice even coating all over everything. I'm actually looking forward to this. This looks so good. And finally, we're going to tote, coat it with the cheese. And that is our final product for the most part. I'm going to improvise a little bit. Because honestly, what isn't improved with some jalapenos on top, right? So, Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the lid on this and I'm going to have to improvise a little bit more too because this recipe is actually designed to be done on a campfire. This is all stuff that you do in the camp, not uh, in the kitchen. So I got to improvise a little bit, figure out how we're going to do this in the oven. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to start it at about 350 degrees in the oven for about 30 minutes and we're going to take a look at it and see how it looks and we'll kind of make a decision there whether we have to go forward a little more catch up with you a little bit all right it's in the oven we're going to start with 30 minutes at 350 degrees and we'll see where we go from there uh, the recipe says between 30 and 40 minutes so like i said i'm going to start with 30 and we'll take a look at it and we'll see if it needs a little bit more at the end catch up with you in 30 minutes all right, 30 minutes has passed. We're gonna take a look and see what we look what we look like here. Oh, that's looking pretty decent. I do wanna give it a little bit more time here, I think, because I want it to become a little bit more bubbly in the middle. So I'm gonna put it in there for another 10 or 15 minutes and let's see what it looks like. All right, we're done for 45 minutes now. Let's open this thing up and let's see what we got. I think it's probably gonna be good, so I'm actually gonna turn the oven off here. Oh man, if you can smell this thing. Holy cow, does this smell good. Let's set that there. Let's close the oven here, turn off the light. And I'm gonna take a little peek in here and let's see what we got. Oh yeah, there we go, now we're cooking. Now, the recipe actually says to let this thing rest for 10 minutes or so inside the uh, inside the uh, Dutch oven. So we're gonna let that go. I think I'm, I might actually yeah, go even a little longer, maybe go 15 minutes. This will just kind of allow it to cool off a little bit and uh, we'll see where we get. But man, this smells fantastic. I can't wait to try this. All right, 10 minutes have gone by, and let's take a look. Oh yeah, that looks good. I think that's gonna be yummy. Let's get a little scoop out of that, and let's do the taste test. I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, I gotta say right now, this smells fantastic. Now, I'm prepared just in case, because you always need to take a, get a little bit of help with uh with any kind of Mexican food. So I got a good uh, good hot sauce that I can use to goose this thing up. But this should be pretty good just by itself. And I want to try it the first time by itself just so I know what the base is so I know how much I have to goose it up in the future. But here we go. Yeah, fantastic, really good. Does need a little bit of help. It's got a nice little bite to it. I can, especially kind of in the aftermath, I taste the jalapenos in there a little bit. But it definitely could use a little bit more zing but very, very good. It's a good, good, tasty, uh, very good. And I love all the, all the chicken in it. A lot of times, you know, you get chicken enchilada, you know, they don't put enough chicken in there. There's enough chicken in this. This is really good. Definitely recommend this one. Yeah, definitely recommend this one. Definitely, I'll include the recipe down below, including the recipe for shredding the chicken. That's kind of separate from this thing. 45 minutes seems to be about the uh, right time to cook this at 350 in the oven. Like I said, I was kind of just kind of faking it because the recipe is actually designed to be uh, 
done on like a campfire. But 3.50 at 45 minutes seems about right. And then 10 minutes of wait time turned out really good. So definitely this is a hit. I'll try this one again. And if you like a good chicken enchilada, this is good. I'll probably get about eight meals out of this. That's what this says on the recipe. It serves eight. Although I'm a bigger guy, so I sometimes uh, eat a little bit more than a typical serving. So maybe I'll get six out of this. But still, very, very good. Recommend it and uh, check it out if you get a chance. So I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching. And I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.